Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this is the final lecture in this mini-series which define different uh, inverse trigonometric functions. In this case, it's arc cosecant. Now, um, as usually, uh, we define inverse function based on the original function. So for arc cosecant, we have to examine the cosecant first. So what is the cosecant? Again, uh, it's not really a, a direct definition. We usually define uh, cosecant uh, of x as 1 over sine of x. So, what I would like to start is uh, with the sine, then invert it to get the cosecant, and then go to inverse function to a cosecant to get its properties. And there are not, not many properties. It's like uh, odd or even, if any, uh, domain and range and how it behaves, the graph, etc. All right, so one by one. Start with a sign. Sign is easy. Sign is this. Something like this. Minus one. This is pi. This is pi over two. This is minus pi over 2, minus pi, 2 pi, 3 pi over 2. OK, we start with a sign. Now, let's turn it around, 1 over sign. Well, obviously, those points where the sign is equal to 0, uh, we will have um, asymptotes. All right, so. OK, these are asymptotes. Now, how the sign looks like? Well, let's consider this interval from one asymptote to another. In the middle, it's equal to 1. So 1 over sign will also be equal to 1, right? So from this point, if you go left and right, sign goes down to 0 while still being positive. So 1 over sign would go to infinity remaining positive. In this case, we have similar situation, but with a negative sign. So it's uh, at 3 pi over 2, it's minus 1. So 1 over sine will also be minus 1. And then left and right from this point, sine goes down, which means 1 over sine goes up to infinity. But in this case, it's a negative infinity. And same thing here. And obviously, it's all repeated many times. So let me wipe out the sign. So I will have only the cosecant. All right. We've got the function cosecant. Now let's talk about inverse function. We don't need this anymore. We have the graph of the cosecant. And let's talk about um, inverging this function. Now, inverse function, first of all, let's uh, define what's the values of uh, x and uh, what's the domain and the range of this function. Now, in this particular case, x can be anything except 0, pi, 2 pi, etc. So let's put it this way. x not equal to um, pi n, where n is integer number. Now, y is 1 and above, or minus 1 and below. So absolute value of y is greater or equal to 1. So these are our domain and the range. Now, we know that whenever we are switching to inverse function, whatever used to be domain becomes a range, whatever used to be range becomes domain. However, what we have to do is we have to be able to find for the value of the function, value of the argument. And in this case, we cannot do it. If you take the value of the function, let's say this, minus whatever, 1 and a half, minus 1.5. Now, 
you draw this horizontal line, and wherever we intersect our graph, so all these arguments are arguments where the function is equal to minus one and a half. So we cannot identify a single argument which can be um, put into correspondence to a single value of the function. So there is no inverse function. Now, what we want to do is we have to define, and we would like to define inverse functions, so what should, should we do? Well, the typical answer, as with many other trigonometric functions, is reduce the domain. Reduce the domain of this function cosecant to an area where it, it does have the inverse function. Well, and, and the easiest way is to find the uh, interval where um, the function is monotonous. Now, traditionally, this interval is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, this one. So if I will put boundaries like this, then my graph, whatever is left of it, would be this. So only these two branches, this one and this one, around zero. It's monotonously decreasing in this case from minus one to minus infinity. And it's monotonously increasing here from plus infinity to one. So the function is monotonous in this particular interval. There are some other intervals where the function is monotonous, don't take me wrong, but this is traditionally taken as, as the uh, definition for uh, the main of the cosecant if we would like to inverse the function. Uh, why? Because it's closer to the zero, and the function with a reduced domain is um, odd, as you see, because sine is odd function. You change the sign if you change the sign of the argument. All right, so on this particular interval, we can define our uh, inverse function. So instead of this, we reduce the mean to minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 without the midpoint zero where the function is not defined and it has an asymptote. But the y is still uh, in the same range, from one up or from minus one down. So we did not really change the range of the original function. We just changed the domain, reduced it to uh, the interval where the function is monotonous. Now, since we know that the function is monotonous, we can create its graph. So this is arc cosine of x. Uh, sorry, sorry, arc cosecant of x. OK, so you know that the graph of this and this function are supposed to be symmetrical relative to, relatively to the bisector of the main angle. So if this graph is, let me maybe repeat it. So this is pi over 2, and this is minus pi over 2. So the function is like this. Now this is 1. This is minus 1. OK? Now, inverse function is symmetrical. Um, now, pi over 2 is slightly greater, so its point is to the right. And this is point to the left. OK. Now, let's use a different color. Now, instead of 
horizontal, instead of vertical asymptote, we will have a horizontal asymptote, right? Because asymptote is reflected from y-axis, it's reflected to x-axis, right? Now, whatever used to be here would become here. So the function would have 1 and pi over 2, and it would work like this. And here also I will have minus 1, minus pi over 2, and the function would go this way. So the red one is arc cosecant. The black one is uh, cosecant. So the graphs are symmetrical relatively to the bisector. The domain of this function is what used to be the range for the cosecant function. So in this case, x, uh, absolute value of x greater than 1. That's the domain. Greater than 1, equal or greater, or equal or greater, uh, equal or less than minus 1. These two areas. Now, the range would be from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, except 0. So y belongs from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, except y is not equal to 0. That's the range. And also uh, notice that the function is odd. Why is this function odd? Obviously because the arc cosecant, arc, arc, arc cosecant is odd because the cosecant is, is odd, the cosecant is odd because its definition 1 over sine and sine is odd. So obviously, um, whenever you change the sign uh, of the argument from this to this, the value of the function will also change to, to an opposite. It's very easy to prove. Actually, the proof is even known. In the notes, it's just one line of proof. I don't want to waste time on this. Um, basically, that's it. These are all the properties and this lecture concludes this mini-series where I just wanted to define all the uh, inverse trigonometric functions. Uh, well, they're all defined, and now we can do some problem solving, right? Okay, um, examine once more the notes to this lecture, and uh, if you want to refresh your memory, go through the notes for all the uh, inverse trigonometric functions. They're very short. Um, and uh, in some cases, I just don't uh, put the proof that the function is odd or, or, or even on, on the board because it's a really very simple thing and I put it in notes only. And um, be prepared for different, uh, more complex things about trigonometry. And that would be the subject of many le lectures to go. Thanks very much and good luck.